Hey guys, it's time for another update on my EVE 280 amp hour prismatic batteries. As you may know from a previous video, I've been working on getting these balanced. So I have them in two separate groupings of 16 here. Uh, these 16 were all balanced in parallel, and then these 16 were all balanced in parallel. So what I'm going to do is take one battery from each of these parallel sets and assemble them into battery packs. However, before we get to that step, a few people were asking if I had noticed any of these cells expanding. Now the data sheet does specify that the cell will be 0.5 millimeters thicker at full state of charge as opposed to 0% state of charge. However, I noticed when I received them, they were slightly concave, so I'm not expecting too much expansion. I put these cells in here by hand, and I can no longer pull them out. They are in there pretty tight, all of them. So I do know they expanded a little bit, and that's why I believe that it's so important to make sure these are compressed before doing the top balancing step. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this block here at the end. So there was a lot of tightness in there that wasn't in there before. However, if you take this cell and look at the plane of it, like look straight down across it, uh, you can see I don't notice any visible signs of uh, expansion. Alright, so I have eight cells here. There are four cells from each of the two groups that we balanced. So I'm just taking one cell from each grouping and I'm putting the polarities in the same direction. Then for the next cell, doing the same thing, one from each grouping, polarities in the same direction, opposite of what the first was. So the result of that is we have positive positive, negative negative, positive positive, and negative negative. Now there seems to be some controversy as to whether or not you need a plastic separator between each of the series pairs. I don't want to chance this insulation rubbing through and shorting out two of these pairs that are wired in series because the positive terminal is connected to the outside of the case. So the only thing that separates these two shells from contacting each other is this plastic shrink wrap. Now it's not a direct connection from positive to casing. There is some resistance so you wouldn't get like a dead short the same way if you shorted across the terminals, but still it's a risk I do not want to take. Uh, so I bought some of this cutting mat on Amazon. Uh, it is 1 32nd inch thick, and it comes in a fairly large sheet. So I cut three pieces the same size as the cells, and I'm just going to put one of those between each of the parallel sets. That way there is a plastic insulator in addition to the shrink wrap between each parallel set. So I got one here, and then I got one more down here. Now, these batteries are fully charged from the balancing, and I don't want to take any chance whatsoever of shorting these out. So you can see I'm not wearing any jewelry, no rings, and additionally I am putting some duct tape, any kind of tape will work, across the terminals just to prevent accidental contact if a tool or something were to fall. Now there is also some debate as to whether or not these batteries need to be compressed. A lot of people are saying that, uh, like we're using them at a low C rate, we're not doing a 1C or a 280 amp discharge on these, so the amount of space the cell swells should be minimal. On the other hand, I've seen some other people saying that, you know, this, the cells swell when they top charged them. And it looks like they do a little bit. Now the spec sheet does say that these cells will swell 0.5 millimeters depending on full or empty state of charge. I'm still going to compress mine for two reasons. Number one, I do not want to put stress on these terminal posts as the cells expand and contract. And number two, the most recent data sheet for these cells specifically says that you will get an extra 1,000 cycles before the cell hits 80% state of health if your cells are compressed. Now it does give a specification for that. It does say something like 300, I forget what the unit was off the top of my head, but it converted to about 12 pounds per square inch. So my choice is to compress these. Whether you want to compress your own, that's fine. So I actually went out and purchased some steel band. This is a 100 foot roll. It cost about 95 bucks, so it's fairly expensive. This certainly is not going to be the cheapest way to do it. And then this is the tool, the bandit tool you use for tightening down that strap. So you basically put the steel band uh, in the front here through this, and there's a little jaw here that grabs onto it. Then you tighten down this handle which pulls the strap and tightens it down. And then this arm here is used for cutting it once you have it to the tightness you want. So we're going to try this today and see how this works. All right, so I've cut off a 68 inch piece of the strap here, and that's just from previous testing. I've determined 68 inches was the best length uh, that gives me the amount I need to grab with the tool while not wasting an excessive amount. Uh, so these little buckles here are used for securing the two ends of the strap together. And this particular buckle is made for one half inch strap. And you can see there are some teeth here on the top, along with some teeth on the bottom, which really grab the strap and help keep it in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is slide the strap in from the front here 
so that the two pieces you squeeze here are in the back. Then taking a pair of pliers, I'm going to bend down approximately one inch or so of the strap. And then on the bottom side, you'll see that slides under this pair of teeth, like so. Uh, so once this is tightened down, these teeth will be grabbing this bottom piece and really preventing it from backing out, in addition to this folded over loop we created. Now there are a few more things to consider here. Obviously I can't put this strap directly around the batteries because I cannot have this metal cutting into this case, cutting through this insulation here and uh, shorting out this case. So I have this piece of cutting board I purchased on Amazon. This is one half inch thick. It's nice and strong. Uh, it doesn't really bend very easily. I'm going to put one of these at each end of the battery pack. But of course, even though this is strong, it's not immune to being punctured or anything like that. Uh, so I'm also going to take a piece of this one half inch uh, aluminum U-channel and put this up against here. Now this is also cut just a hair longer so that it overhangs the batteries. That way the strap is not resting directly on the batteries. And I'll show you that in a minute once I assemble it. But basically the U-channel is going to sit like so. And then I'll have the strap passing through like this. Additionally, to help spread the compressive force across this plane here, I'm going to slide a second buckle. That way when I put the strap through the aluminum U-channel, the force is now being exerted from each corner along with in the center, providing three places where this is going to clamp down this board. All right, so I do apologize, but it is tricky to get some of this stuff on camera here uh, because of how spring-like this strap is and keeps wanting to fly back everywhere. But basically, I'm taking the other end of the strap, I'm sticking it through the top part here of the clamp, and once you pull it tight, you'll have a tab sticking out here like this. So I'm taking my tool here, lifting up this arm, and then the strap goes through the front part, and you can see down in there where that black lever is grabbing onto the tab of the strap here. So next, while trying to hold it uh, exactly where I want it here, I'm just going to start tightening it down. I may have cut this one a little bit longer than it needed to be. And then while I'm tightening this down before it's completely tight, I'm going to place a 2x6 in the back here, which I can use to push all these cells up against it just to make sure everything is staying straight and lined up nicely. And then I'm just pretty much watching this as I'm tightening it down to make sure things remain straight. Now the downside to this approach is obviously I don't know what amount of force I'm putting on these cells and if it's up to spec or not. Uh, I'm kind of just feeling it out and feeling when it's tight. And I can see that this strap is pulled nice and tight here. Um, so when you're done and you have it the tightness you want, you can go ahead and bend this back. But I'm not going to cut it just yet. I'm just going to leave the end hanging there. And the reason is I want to put the second piece on down here. And when I tighten this piece down, I want to make sure this one does not loosen up. Because once you cut this tab off here, you can no longer put the tool back on to tighten it any further. So once I've got the bottom strap in and I've gotten them to what I feel like is similar tightness, you can see how I can now lift it as one block. Now this has to be close to 100 pounds. I'm going to guess this is probably about 85 or so. I haven't weighed it, but uh, it's very, very strong. Because I still don't want to put pressure on these terminals in the top. I'll probably put a 2x6 underneath when I'm moving it and then slide it off the 2x6 once it's in the final location. So once you've got the tightness to where you want it, I'm folding over this tab here and hammering it down. And then these two tabs on the top and the bottom will fold over and really clamp that down well. So, let's see. And uh, now with this tab sticking off here, you can put that back in your tool and just cut off the excess. Or you can just keep it there if you want. I mean, I like to cut it off so it looks nice. All right, so for making the connections, I have two negatives back here. This will be my main negative for the battery pack. So I have a positive here and two negatives I need to join. So that's essentially going to put these two cells in parallel and then series them with these two cells also in parallel. You can see I have positive, positive, negative, negative. Taking a small piece of 800 grit sandpaper and just lightly going over the terminals here to remove any oxidation that's settled on them. I don't want to like scrunch them up or really scrape them on. I'm just removing the oxidative layer. 
Next, I'm taking a little bit of this OxGuard antioxidant. This is for aluminum to aluminum or aluminum to copper, really just to prevent an oxidative layer from forming over these terminals and just a very light coat. I'm not trying to like smear it on or anything. Just need a very light coat on top. And I've got my studs to screw in next. And I'm tightening them the whole way down with the Allen wrench uh, here. So next I'm putting one bus bar for each of the parallel connections. And then I'm putting a bus bar for the series connection. So next I'll just thread down by hand my uh, nuts here. So these are serrated flange nuts. And then I've got my torque wrench with the 10 millimeter deep socket insulated just in case it falls off. And it's set to 35 inch pounds to start with. Now I'm just going to try tightening them down without holding this hex key because I don't think 35 inch pounds is going to risk damaging this terminal below. I hope not, but we'll see what happens here. So first I'll tighten down the two outside, just to 35 inch pounds. And you can feel when it breaks, you know to stop. Okay, and then just do the two center ones. All right, and I'm good to go. So I just need to do the other terminals and connections the same way. All right, and you can see the final setup here. This is the main positive with each of the series connections until you get to the main negative over here. This is essentially now one large 12 volt 560 amp battery. So I will have four modules like this, all wired in series, which will give you my 51.2 volt 560 amp battery. Now there is a lot of exposed metal up here, so I'm probably gonna keep this covered. I only have it uncovered for the purposes of this video and then find something to cover with this to make it safe because I don't want to have the accident of something dropping across here in this, in this welding or melting or who knows what's gonna happen. I also wanna thank everybody who provided feedback on my last video regarding the Loctite. I decided not to use Loctite based on your input. Thank you very much. The original issue I was trying to solve with the Loctite was number one, the studs felt loose and number two, avoiding bottoming out in the terminal. The first issue was resolved by tightening them with the Allen wrench. I didn't have them tightened well enough the first time. When I hand tighten with the Allen wrench, they're no longer wobbly, that's fine. The second issue was resolved. I'm only using 35 inch pounds and I don't believe 35 inch pounds is going to break through the bottom. 35 inch pounds is hardly any torque at all. So I don't think there's any concern in my opinion of damaging the bottoms of these posts when using a torque wrench to ensure you're not exceeding the recommended torque. Please let me know what you think here if you'd be doing this the same way. I want you to think of the banding idea. I'll link to all the parts and tools I use for this down below. Um, again, the band is certainly not the cheapest way to go. This band costs about a dollar per foot in addition to the tools you have to buy to use it. But I thought this was a very cool approach. And lastly, before I go, a lot of people are interested in what I'm doing with the BMS. I promise uh, more information is coming soon. I'm working on helping uh, provide feedback for a new product that's coming to market which is why I can't really talk about it just yet. But I promise within the next two weeks, probably sooner there will be more information released on that. If you found this interesting, please hit that like button down below. I always appreciate any comments, questions, or ideas you guys have. And uh, thanks for watching.